Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Kiyoki Allen. I'm the Audit Supervisor with the Cannabis Compliance Board. Uh, today, um, Jason Banales, our Inspection Supervisor, and myself, um, along with Kara Kronkai, which is our Chief of Health and Safety of the Cannabis Compliance Board, will be conducting this webinar today uh, as a review of the menu item approval and CCB item catalog rollout. Um, few housekeeping notes before we get started. One, we're going to go through the presentation um, and we will allow uh, questions at the end. So while we're going through the, the presentation and if you feel like you have any questions that require more clarification, please place it in the chat. Please refrain from um, uh, asking any questions until we get to the question and answer session. Um, once we get to the end of the presentation, uh, we will answer all questions accordingly. If we do find that there are duplication of questions in the chat, we may skip it and just answer it once and um, identify that we have already answered it. We will take all of your questions at the end of this webinar to create a frequently asked questions um, listserv to go out so everyone can, can have this information in writing with the answers uh, provided by the CCB. And after all of those disclaimers this morning, I'm going to go ahead and get started with uh, our presentation. Um, so if you are joining this, as a reminder, uh, there is this webinar is for the menu item approval and CCB item catalog rollout. Um, if it looks like I am on the screen, I am not looking directly at the screen because I have double screens. Um, I'm looking at the screen that has the presentation on it, so don't think that I'm ignoring you in any form or fashion. Okay. All right, so this webinar objectives. So in compliance with the NRS 678B 635, um, commencing May 1st, 2024, the Cannabis Compliance Board, in collaboration with Metric, will initiate the launch of the CCB item catalog. Um, this will be a, a digital repository and serves as a user-friendly user -friendly online database encompassing cannabis and related products available through our state's licensed cannabis retailers. It is aimed to furnish the public, consumers, medical patient, law enforcement agencies with the current comprehensive item information, including product-specific certified lab analysis, product locations, and re real-time product hold status, fostering transparency in the industry. And the purpose of this webinar is to equip participants with a thorough comprehension of the menu approval requirements and process stipulated in the Nevada Cannabis Compliance Regulations. Additionally, attendees will learn the essential steps for creating items within the seed to sale system. Topics being discussed today are menu item approval requirements, menu item approval process, item setup requirements in the seed to sale um, system metric, the item catalog overview, and then we will go through our frequently asked questions or our question and answer session. In accordance with NCCR 9.025, Section 3, requirements and restrictions on use of non-cannabis ingredients, um, all production facilities must submit all new items, menu items, and their ingredients to the appropriate board agents for approval. Number two, submission must be submitted on a form prescribed by the board. Number three, approval is required prior to the production and sale of new products. And four, prevents the production of nasal sprays, inhalers, eye drops, or medical devices. Jason, do you wanna add to that in any way? Um, as, as you guys are familiar, um, the form prescribed by the board is a CELA, so this will um, continue to be um, the menu item process approval will continue to be through a CELA. As Kerry mentioned, it's prior to production or sale of new products. If you are doing R&D, that is a separate request. 
Um, and it is kind of like a chicken and egg thing. So we'll work with you on kind of which one um, needs to be submitted and, and working that out as you um, refine your recipes. And the the um, medical device thing is because FDA regulates medical devices. So we um, they would not um, permit those with cannabis. So that is why it's specifically prohibited. So ready to consume products, ready to consume products defined um, as ready to consume products means an adult use edible cannabis product that is prepared and or infused on the premises of a cannabis consumption lounge presented in the form of a food stuff or beverage. I don't know what that was supposed to be. Uh, Copy and pasting, guys. Uh, sold in a heated or unheated state and intended for immediate consumption. Yeah, no, it, it is food stuff that's uh, from <laughs> the federal code. I know it sounds funny. Um, and if you are a consumption lounge, um, right, so that previous menu item approval was talking about productions. This is consumption lounges. You are also required to get your menus approved. Um, we're doing that a little differently. Um, but if you are a consumption lounge, um, we'll work with you directly with your assigned inspector um, as you kind of get geared up. Um, we're learning about, um, we're all processing consumption lounges together. So um, the handful of y'all will, will kind of do a similar thing and we'll be asking about ingredients in production, um, but it'll be just slightly different. Still through a seller, um, but it'll be more, um, more of a together task since it is a new a new one. So ready to consume cannabis products include but are not limited to adult use edible cannabis products that have been pre washed pre cooked or otherwise prepared for consumption and do not require additional cooking or preparation, including proportioning. Each serving of a ready consume, ready to consume cannabis product must be individually dosed, not to exceed 10 milligrams THC. Menu items offered must be submitted to the appropriate CCB agent for approval. Food items under this jurisdiction of the USDA are subject to inspection, seizure, and destruction by the USDA. And each ready to consume cannabis product must include the notice THC may not be evenly distributed throughout this product. Um, and again, the menu items offered at these consumption lodges will work with you on that menu. Um, as a clarification, USDA has oversight over meat, poultry, eggs, and catfish. And that little disclaimer may not be evenly distributed, um, can be in any fancy form you wish, but um, it could be on a, a cute little sign with it or or just on the label as well. So as long as it's being disclosed. So new items approval process. So new menu items. Approvals for new menu items or revised menu items must be submitted through the Acela platform under the license facility account. Submissions must include the following information. Ingredients, including source of ingredients, meaning approved food establishments, naturally, botanically derived terpenes, et cetera. Uh, number two, ingredients of ingredients as applicable. So flavorings, ready-made foods, formulations. Standard operating procedures, including dosing information. So dose of the total package and each serving, measuring device for liquid edibles, stamp mold information for edibles, et cetera, et cetera. Um, food safety procedures within SOP, so the use of gloves as an example. And number three, information on formulation of product. That means extraction procedures, uh, handling procedures, roles and responsibility, uh, procedures to ensure homogeneity. So um, for that, for those, sorry, just for the new menu items, right? So it, it really depends on kind of what the item is, which is why some of the stuff is as applicable. Um, if you're, you know, um, there are regulations in there saying you must get non-cannabis ingredients, including CBD and hemp, from sources that comply with state and federal laws, right? So if it's a food establishment, 
as long as they're locally permitted, but if, if they're terpenes, we're going to want to make sure that those are naturally and botanically derived. Um, right, food safety procedures within the SOP. I've seen an SOP that says, you know, when we're making the infused pre roll, we're going to dip our finger in the water and then seal it. Um, right, we'd want that to say a gloved uh, finger, right? So things like that that we're looking for um, that may not necessarily be applicable to all menu items, but that's what the um, inspectors are going to be looking for. Um, and, you know, if it's a liquid edible or if it's um, something that's hard to stamp, you know, we're just going to be looking for compliance with those regulations. All right, so changes to menu items. We want to remind everyone that if there are any changes to a menu item that have already been approved that in accordance with 9.045 section 4 any changes in the recipe production run size or equipment used to produce an edible cannabis product must be approved by the appropriate board agent the board agent may require new approval or testing pursuant to this section for such a change menu item update approvals um, submission as a menu uh, request amendment in a cella. So it would be the same, the same uh, process you would um, follow with the original menu request. So it's the exact same submission process. Information referencing the previous approval can be helpful, but is not required and will not be accepted in place of ingredients, uh, SOPs, or other required information. Um, certain changes in recipe or production size must receive new approvals. So yes, um, if you say, oh, previously approved as menu number, you know, back in 2021, that'll help be helpful for the inspector, but we do want to see those updated SOPs to make sure that your current SOPs, um, what we are approving, and as, um, right, so if you're like, hey, we're a, um, a brand, we were under, you know, Keras production, and now we're actually going to contract with Kaoki's production and move to that location, right? Um, just because it was previously approved, we want to see those new SOPs because the new facility may require um, different procedures, so we want to make sure those are done being properly. Um, and, you know, um, not all changes are the same, so I think we have some um, examples to kind of help clarify that. Um, so on the left side, we have some examples of what would require approval. Um, on the right are some, you know, changes that may not require approval. So changes in recipe proportion. So as an example, if you went from 500 grams of sugar to five grams of sugar, you know, that may affect the available water molecules and the water activity within that product, which affects the shelf stability. So that's why we're kind of concerned with those big proportion changes, right? Um, Something that would not require approval of a change in, in recipe is a like for like replacement. So I'm going from brand X sugar or brand Y sugar. You know, it's it's just sugar. If you're getting it from Target, it's going to be the same as you're getting it from Walmart, right? Um, I, I would put a note, just exercise caution when you're, um, you know, on terpenes and isolates because um, we want to make sure that those are the same, that um, there are naturally botanically derived terpenes and they are non-synthetic cannabinoids. So um, for food ingredients, you're pretty safe. For other ones, you may want to resubmit. Um, another thing that would require approval is a change in recipe ingredients. For example, if you went from a dark chocolate bar to a milk chocolate bar, you're now introducing an allergen. So that that may that would require an update. Um, maybe you're changing from margarine to a full fat coconut oil, right? That again could affect the homogeneity of, of the THC um, with the with the fat content that's in that um, ingredient. Um, production run size changes, right? Maybe you're going from 2,000 brownies to 14,000 brownies. I'm pretty sure your SOP is going to look a little different. Um, the equipment might even change. Um, and that, um, depending, it would need a new full panel homogeneity as well um, because of the, the way that those samples are taken by the lab. Um, changes in equipment that affect production. You know, I was trying to come up with an example, um, you know, something maybe like we used to, um, you know, have fruits that were a little dry and maybe now we're using a dehydrator to dry the fruits or we're no longer using a dehydrator and we're using just a, an oven to dehydrate our fruits prior to infusion. Um, that may affect some of the product and that would need a uh, 
approval. Like I said, the like for like replacements do not require approval if it is bare, it is exact replacements. Um, usable cannabis in jars and bags do not need uh, menu approval. Um, but a note, your trimming SOP should adhere to the regulations and be available upon agent request. Um, there may the all that stuff, but the usable cannabis in jars, it is just flour in a jar. There's no added ingredients that would not need a menu approval. Um, strain changes or strain specific approvals and note in a cell, they do not require approval. Metric items um, and strain items. I think we've gotten that in an FAQ about Strains must be approved, right? So they, we're talking about the Acela approval, what requires a menu Acela approval. So the strain changes, if, if you're saying I'm doing 100% or um, in my example, a butane distillate with 5% botanically derived terpenes, and I'm going to change from, you know, Girl Scout cookies one to Girl Scout cookies three. Um, that would not necessarily require a new menu item approval in Acela because it is going to be the same butane distillation, same formulation with the same botanically derived terpenes from that source. Um, something else that would not require a menu approval is like for like equipment replacements. I'm going from a 20 quart mixer A to a 20 quart mixer B, right? This a, a different brand. It's still the same mixer. The SOPs are going to stay the same. I'm going to let the mixer run for five minutes to ensure homogeneity. That's not changing. Um, however, the new equipment um, should be submitted as an EQP, but the menu will not need to be resubmitted for that. So, um, and just a note, some of these changes may require a new full panel homogeneity test, um, but your inspector will look at that and let you know if it is required because um, sometimes we'll allow you to keep the same one if, if everything's still um, kind of equivalent. All right, thank you. So to submit your menu approval request, please visit um, your Acela portal. I've placed the link in here. We'll make sure that we have that um, um, online for you. You can also reach it by visiting the CCB website. There's a, a um, location on the homepage um, in the top right corner, and it's uh, labeled industry login, and you can um, facilitate the links from there. There's a link for the Acela production, for the Acela, uh, the Acela website and also for the metric website. Menu item reminders. So category three violations, um, the board will determine a category three violation of the NCCR in Title 56 of the NRS as follows. Um, there are violations of a severity that create a potential threat to public health or safety, including without limitations, failing to notify the board or board agents of a modification or in expansion of the facilities of the cannabis establishment or a change in equipment or menu of the cannabis establishment. So we wanted to bring that to your attention that um, if you change equipment or menu of the can uh, of in your facility, you may want to let us know. Um, or if you're unsure if it requires a notification or not, just feel free to email the C the uh, audit inspections at ccb.mv.gov. Um, between audit inspections and program support, we should be able to get you back a, um, a reply very quickly if something would need to be um, submitted for a, an approval. So for packaging, so new packaging must be approved, changes in packaging design must be approved. Um, you submit new or updated packaging as a ADV request in a seller. Bulk packaging or white label packaging with no design is not required to be submitted for approval, but must be food grade. So for instance, if you just have a one of those white bags, you're going to have your compliance label on there, but there's no design on there. You don't need to submit that for um, packaging approval. Um, you know, so those those changes in design, I'm going to add, you know, a bunch of I'm going to change my design completely. 
um, those should be submitted for approval. If you have any questions about minor changes, feel free to submit them to audit inspection and, and we'll get you a response. So the metric item setup, um, which is the biggest question of the, the day today. Um, so following the CCB approval of a new menu item in your Acela account, new items created in metric will require supplemental information, <coughs> excuse me, to be added. This include any item that are destined for retail. So please note that intermediate and bulk packages that are not destined for retail will not require the additional of supplemental information. So as a reminder to create an item, you will select the items option from the admin area drop down on the navigational toolbar. Then select add item button to create to begin creating a new item for submission. As you can see, sample metric account drop down items and you would add your item. This will create a, an action window and the following fields. Um, a description of the item would need to be completed. Um, for example, it'll be 10 milligrams of infused chocolate chip cookie, and then you would add the ingredients, which would be the wheat flour, semi-sweet chocolate, et cetera. Um, there's gonna be a box for allergens. Um, you're gonna list the allergens, which for this example would be wheat and soy. A product photo. Um, so the product photo you should get all sides of the product and the description field. Um, you would add the Acela approval number to this field. So that means that um, there's going to be, and we would, I will show this to you on the next slide, um, there's going to be a PDF requirement, and in that PDF requirement, you're going to reference the previous approval. So if you if you already had an approval in Acela, um, you're going to reference the Acela menu approval item. So you're just going to upload the PDF of that approval and that PDF requirement. If it is pre-Acela, meaning that if you um, had approvals prior to July 1st, 2020, um, and you have that approval letter, um, meaning that it is not in Acela, then you will be required to upload a copy of the signed PDF approval and a copy of the SOPs. Um, we want to assure you that, that your SOPs will not be visible to the public menu catalog. In addition to that, you're going to um, up upload the label photo, um, the packaging photo, and that only upload approved packaging. New or changed packages must be submitted in a seller as a new um, packaging request. Packaging photo description field, if you have already had it approved in a seller, then you're just going to add the ADV approval number in the description field. And here's an example. So when you're creating your items, you're gonna create the item name, of course, the unit of measure, um, any other name that you may have, um, pretty much they should be uh, similar. Uh, the strain, um, which is not required uh, and the category and the unit weight. And then you're gonna put in here the description of the item. This is where you're gonna put the description and your um, ingredients. Um, you're gonna put a list of the allergens and the allergen field. You're gonna add the photo, product photo. You're gonna select the file and then the menu item approved in the seller. Um, you're going to add the approval number in this field if it's already been approved. So if you already have uploaded your SOPs in the seller and all that's been approved, you do not have to redo it here. All you're going to add here is the menu item approval number and the PDF. You're going to add a copy of that PDF approval as the upload. Um, if 
again, if it was not approved via Acela and you have um, a letter and that has not been uploaded into Acela or reapproved um, or was approved prior to July 1st of 2020, then you will be required to upload that um, approval letter that you receive from either Department of Taxation or um, I want to say Department of Behavioral and Public Health. Um, you would need to upload that into this section and it will require um, an, a review by our team. So that would be in this section. The next session would be that label photo. And um, again, the packaging photo, and then you would add the ADV approval number in this section um, if it's already been approved. If it has not been approved, then you would definitely need to go into a seller to resubmit that um, or to not resubmit, but to submit that submit that for approval. So why the change? Um, that, that was a transfer over, but so the change, um, as we stated in the beginning of this, um, the webinar is that uh, the board is required by statute to create a um, forward facing database um, that is easily accessible for public use. Um, the use has to be uh, user friendly. And so we, um, the board along with metric, created um, the item catalog with a few adjustments. Um, so just as a quick overview, um, the item, item catalog uh, will be on our landing page. It will be accessible through our website. So the CCB website. Um, once they click on it, it would take them to a window to confirm their age. Um, and then it would actually take them to where they can search the item and they can search it by name. Um, you, they will be able to search it by facility uh, or just simply category. Um, and then it will bring them up a window uh, similar to this one that will show a list of items that are currently in the catalog. Um, the reason why we want you to upload the pictures um, and, and in particular in the packaging is because if, it, if you don't upload it, it's going to look like this. You're going to have a default metric logo because there is no picture uploaded. Um, but in this, this is just like a brief description because you may um, be in other states and they may have this item approval. Jason um, and I worked very uh, diligently and very hard probably over the last year uh, working with metric to revise how this is actually going to look. Um, and before that is released, we will make sure that that um, everyone has a copy of how it's actually going to look with the description, the allergens and the um, uh the ingredients um listed on there but also on this field there will be a um option for the public user to click to download the pdf so meaning the actual coa the certificate of analysis um the the test results will be listed on the individual item um and for clarification, um, just like the uh, test results follow the source package into the child packages, it's going to work the same way on the website. So whatever the test results are for that particular package, they will be able to uh, pull it up and identify that package or that production run that they have um, in their hand. Um, this is just another screenshot um, just showing the item name and how they could just download. Um, they will have the item category um, as well to search, and that was just the search menu um, and the item catalog. So now, um, as our really quick brief uh, webinar has come to an end, uh, we do have some questions in our chat that I will read off. 
um, and either myself or one of the team members here will uh, answer the questions for you. So if you do not see your question in the chat, please feel free to add it to the chat. So we may answer your questions. And um, as a reminder, these questions that you are adding to the chat will be compiled into a frequently asked questions um, bulletin and listserv um, and will be disseminated um, by Tuesday of next week. All right, so I'm going to go to the top. Um, so the first question for our team, if I have already approved if I have already approved a piece of equipment in a certain location, example, packaging machine, do I need to resubmit an approval to, to move the equipment to a new location in the same facility address? No, I would say, um, especially if it's a countertop piece of equipment, you don't need to, um, although we do ask for location on equipment. Um, if it's something big that's gonna require, you know, um, construction and plumbing, then yes, because that would be considered a material change as a facility modification. I, I do see that you put within the same facility address, but again, each license is separate. So if you're moving it from cultivation to production or something like that, then you would want to resubmit that under the correct license. But if it's a countertop piece of equipment, like it just does your um, labels and it can be easily moved, um, then, then no, you would not need to. Um, just make sure that, you know, that area is approved for what you're using that equipment for. The next question, can SOPs be submitted to include multiple batch sizes if all factors, ingredients, and equipment except batch size are constant? For instance, one recipe can be scaled for 200 to 800 brownies. Does an SOP need to be submitted for every possible batch size? Um, we need to be able to scale production runs based on sales demand trends. Um, the great question. Yeah, definitely you could submit multiple things with one uh, menu request, um, right? If you're going to, even if, like you said, you're making like a little um, drink and there's going to be a five milligram version and a 10 milligram version, right? You can submit those as one um, submission. Um, and, and, and we'd love to see that. That way you could say, when we do it this way, this is what we're doing. When we're doing it this way, this is how we ensure homogeneity. So great question. All right, next question. If we remove an item from an, from a menu, do we have to notify the CCB? No, um, and that's a great point as well. So do not, you do not need to upload things that you are no longer making, right? If you were approved for them three years ago and you stopped producing them, you do not need to be uploading those. I previously um, approved things that are no longer in production. This is just for things that are being produced. Um, so no, it does not require a um, notice that you stopped making those things. Thanks. And then to add to that, um, you may want to check your metric just to make sure that anything that you are no longer using or any items that you are no longer producing that you um, mark them as discontinued. Okay, next question. How do we designate an item as not destined for retail. Um, you can add that to your your item this your item um, description in your metric. That's your business decision. Um, so when you if you want to edit your items or your item names to reflect what's going to be destined for retail and what's not. Um, you can easily update that in metric. Uh, the next one says, what would you put for cultivation allergies? Um, so great question. Um, you would probably not have any. Um, so just as a reminder, the allergens that we're talking about are the nine major allergens that are identified by FDA. So that includes um, milk, eggs, shellfish, um, finfish, tree nuts, peanuts, soy, wheat, 
And in, in 2021, they added sesame. So a uh, sesame is the newest major allergen that is required for labeling. So I'm assuming you're not going to have any of those ingredients in cultivation. Um, so it, you don't need to put anything besides the nine major allergens. If you um, Canada does recognize mustard, so if you feel so inclined, um, but the only required um, the only required allergens, we are talking about the major allergens as identified um, by the feds. Great question. All right, next question. I saw in another state's metric catalog that test results are included on the item listing. Are we doing the same thing in Nevada? If so, uh, will that information auto populate or do we need to enter it for every batch? Great question. Um, yes, it will um, be a part of our item catalog, so it will list the, um, the test results um, and then it would also um, add the PDF document and it will auto populate so you do not need to enter it in for every batch that is a part of what we have been working on for the last year um, back and forth with metric and trying to get new development done so um, we can have it as easily as possible um, translated over into the item catalog all right so next question for cultivation Menu approval, do I need to have each strain approved or would it be each product one eighth pre-rolls? Um, if my eighth and pre-rolls were already approved, do I need to have each strain approved? Um, and also, uh, will I need to request approval for each batch and lot or just product? Yes, yeah, so um, right, the distinction between the Acela menu approval and the uh, metric item catalog, just want to be clear on that, you do not require, and I think there's some questions down there as well. Will cultivations need request approval for incoming strains? What would cultivation put as ingredients, right? So this menu item, the menu approval that's required in Acela, um, that is not for eighths or just regular flour that's in jars, right? The only thing that would need approval on that is packaging if there is a design on the package. Um, but for pre-rolls and things like that, since you're having um, the paper and maybe some glue or whatever you're using to adhere the pre-roll, um, but if it's just usable flour, you don't need the Acela menu approval. You don't need to do it by batch, lot, uh, strain. Now, we we would not make you do that. Um, as far as the metric item catalog, you should have the strains in your metric um, account, and then you should have those items. Again, not going to require by batch or lot. That that's what we've been working on metric to pull that information. And just for clarification, in metric, those items um, do not need an approval. Um, we do need the information in, um, in the requested fields. Um, if, and, and just to let you know, if, if it's just flour, your ingredients, flour. Um, you know, uh, I don't want you guys to overthink it. It's not required. Um, it's, it's not as detailed as it is for production or um, like the consumption lounges. So um, when you are setting up like flowers or if it's just strictly flower, flower. Um, so I hope that clears up your answer. And, and one last thing I wanna add, which I failed to put in here and I apologize is that every item that's in metric right now um, will be grandfathered in. So that's, that's you don't, if, if it's already been approved, um, it's it's grandfathered and you don't have to resubmit it through a seller. However, you would need to follow the process in metric. If it's already in metric, you just need to go into those items and update it. And we're giving you a 90 day period to get that done. Um, in that 90 day period, if you feel like I need additional time, just um, shoot an email to audit inspection and provide us with um, a request for an extension. All right, so next question. How long does the approval process take for flower items? Um, as stated below, 
I mean, uh, uh, previously there are there is no approval for the fly flower items. However, if you have not had your packaging reviewed, um, you may need to submit that uh, packaging review. Uh, Jason, how long is it taking for those type of reviews? Uh, no, yeah. So for the flower items, you wouldn't need to. Oh, for for packaging, packaging, packaging is yeah. same day, same day. Okay. Maybe if Derek's off the next day, um, but it, it's it's less than two days for packaging approvals. We've we caught up on those. And yeah, so you will be required to put those into the metric item catalog. But again, it it won't be held up by an inspector. A, a need for inspector approval. It, it is required to be uploaded in metric, but those will be able to push through because it is that. And if you have no allergens, feel free to put none. All right, the next question. If we already have an item uploaded in the catalog and make an ingredient change, um, after we get it through a seller, can we edit the file to upload the new SOPs, et cetera, in metric? Yes, yes, you can. So you would go to that same item, you would highlight it, and then you would click edit item um, and you will be able to make the corrections. Um, does the packaging picture be, need to be a render file or does it have to be a real photo? It can be either. It should just match whatever your approved packaging was. Um, and just as a little caveat, you know, feel free to use this as a marketing tool. So um, if you want to make a nice photo, in a little white box, you know what I mean? Those little um, photo light photo studio things. Um, it should just match whatever was approved and whatever really is on the shelf. So, um, you know, that way you can use this and say, you know, type in Kara's cookies and you'll be able to look at all my products and see what is exactly on the shelf. And that way you can, um, you know, shop Kara's cookies all day. All right, who can see who can access SOP information in metric given that non production employees shouldn't have access to SOPs. Um, um, we're going to be issuing a bulletin next week as well with the instructions on how to do so. Uh, you have to give permission to people. Um, in your metric account to give them accessibility and you give them the view options of and you actually select administrator, the administrator of that account um, about the accessibility of that information that you you are now uploading uh next question do we need to request an approval for every strain of a previously approved item no no so we don't we don't I, i've got this question a lot which is kind of weird um and i know probably in other states they do <laughs> approve strain specific items we don't um require that um here in nevada so I hope that answers your question. And I um, think for that the confusion might be that you do need to put strains into metrics so that way you can choose the right when you're when you're putting in that item. You should be putting it into metric, but that's not something we approve um, because strains are, you know, um, strains are strains. They, they've been evolving, um, but <laughs> so you do need to put them into your metric account, but that's not something that's going to be waiting on inspector approval. And right, if you changed from, you know, some sh strain A distillate in your brownies and you're going to strain B distillate in your brownies, that does not require new, new submission. Great, the next question, which is a very good question that I do not have the answer to right now. Um, so the photo limits, uh, file size and file types. Um, I will make sure that that's on the frequently asked question that we're going to issue next week. Um, and so I would need to just verify that with the metric team. And I think we have, um, before we get too deep into the next questions, Jason, you have your hand up. I believe I allowed um, Mike. So if you want to come off mute, feel free.
Hello? Hey, hey. we can hear you. Oh. Hi, I was uh, wondering, before we even start uh, doing the new menu item, we, it says we don't have access. Um, I was wondering, how do we get a delegation to able to send these new items? Do you mean in Acela? Yes. Um, so your um, so your point of contact would have to assign you as a delegate in Acela. Um, so um, please reach out to program support. Um, have your point of contact reach out to program support, and they can walk you through how to how to uh, make somebody a delegate. Oh, program support is that is that an email I can? Yeah. Um, let me put it in. The, I'll put it in the chat. Oh, thank you. So but much. it is just program support at ccb.nv.gov. Um, so, but yes, you're you're um, right. There's only one point of contact. They have the pins linked to their account, but they can assign delegates to submit amendments on their behalf. Um, so the question, the next question, I think, can you expound on the requirement for the disclaimer? This may not be evenly distributed or that's this product. When, where is this required? That is consumption lounges only. That is consumption lounges only because you will, the consumption lounges in theory will be infusing at point of sale. So there will be no homogeneity testing done to ensure that it is evenly distributed throughout, right? If you put it in some, some boba milk tea, you stir it all up, over time, it may distribute unevenly. So that's just a disclaimer that legislation um, wanted us to put in there. So that way, if you know, um, maybe you're eating, drinking, drinking your drink, and then you don't finish the last, and you say, "Hey, hey, I can't finish this here, Kaoki," but everything settled to the bottom, Kaoki may may get a little bit stronger of a punch. So that is only required for um, consumption lounges, um, and it can be in many different uh, forms of disclosure, but. Um, for clarification, consumption lounge menu items only. All right, the next question is, our company SOPs and specs are confidential. Are we re allowing the public to view these? Um, no, they're, no, we are not. You're not, if your SOPs have been submitted in a seller and have been approved, you're not even uh, uploading those SOPs into, um, into metric. Um, you're just going to upload the PDF that shows uh, the menu item has been approved. That's it um, with the number that matches the number that you're going to type into uh, that description area. If you um, are not comfortable with um, uploading the PDF into metric, if your item has not been approved through a seller, meaning after July 1st, 2020. Um, so if you're not comfortable doing that, then I suggest that you immediately submit it in a seller for a reapproval. But it will not be public facing regardless. And there is section 6035, 6030 and 6035 that talk about confidentiality of all of your records. So if we get a public records request, we do not grant those because it is confidential of your specific SOPs. All right, next question. We will need to get approval for all items that are already in our system and currently using. No, no. All the items that's in the system right now that you are currently using has, will automatically be approved. Um, the requirement is that within 90 days is that you um, make sure that you update it with the required um, information and items, meaning the photo, the packaging, um, the number of the menu item approval that um, reflects that it has already been approved. Um, so that information would need to be in there. But no, you do not need to go through all of them and, and get them reapproved. Is there a menu approval template checklist that has been developed to ensure that all required items have been submitted? No, but great, great, great idea. I'll write that down and have somebody um, start working on one. All that there is right now is the menu approval form that's on our website, and you'll see that it says for menu items include the I, the ingredients and the SOPs. Um, because, you know, actually there is 
kind of one that we have in progress, and you can see that it is multiple pages just because of the different types of menu items that we see, you know, distillates versus vapes versus suppositories versus capsules versus edibles. Um, but we can try to make a checklist like that, um, even if it's a little more generic to kind of help walk you through. Um, we don't have one, but great, great example. Or excuse me, great, great idea. Uh, will cultivations need request need to request approval for incoming strains? No. Um, her next question is: Will cultivation need to request approval for trials going to retail? Um, I'm going to say no if you're send, if you're saying that you're just sending some testers to retail. That's no. Okay, next question. How long will the metric item request take or will it be approved with a seller request at the same time? Um, again, just to reiterate, um, there are no metric um, request, item request. All your minimum menu items should have been approved through a seller. The only thing that we're requesting is that if it was approved prior to that July 1, 2020, um, and it does not have a menu um, approval number through a seller, then that is what you would need to submit. Um, and then our team will go through just to make sure that everything is correct. And then you're, you may start going through your, um, your metric uh, item list, and you may see just the team working through it, just going through and just checking it off. Um, if for some reason, our team is in the system and they notice that an item has not been approved um, or they've checked the seller and you have not uploaded um, um, the previous approval from the previous agencies, uh, they may reach out to you um, to request that information to see if it, it has indeed been approved or not. And that may need um, it may require you to submit it through a seller for um, an approval, but that's on a case by case basis. All right. Uh, what about production to production bulk products? Um, do you need to submit it for a menu item approval? So they do the the metric item catalog is for those things that are going to retail. So if you're doing production of production or in-house intermediates, you do not need to upload it to the metric item catalog. However, um, all your menu items and SOP should be approved. So again, it does not need to be strain specific, but if you have a butane distillate, that should be that have should have been submitted um, either probably through your original plan review or um, as a menu item. Um, does that mean, next question, does that mean all existing items need to be updated? Um, if you if they are active items, you need to update it with the required information if it is destined for retail. So if you are packaging items that you are you know that you are going to be sub, um, sending directly to a retailer, then that those items need to be updated with the the required information. Um, can you opt out of the item catalog? Not at this time. Again, if you're supplying product that is going to a retailer, um, that information must be made publicly available and we are required to make it publicly available. And we want to make sure that the consumer, the law enforcement, or any user that would need to obtain that information can obtain it easily um, through our website. And I think we did answer the our bulk concentrates yeah. that are sold from production. Those should be uh, submitted for approval in SLA as well. Um, a little bit of a divergence. I, I did get an FAQ in our audit inspection inbox yesterday um, asking, will regulation 7.035 subsection 2 be removed with the rollout of the 
catalog since the public would be able to obtain all pertinent information through this platform. Um, we do not have plans to remove that at this time. You are welcome to suggest that during public comment. However, the board may see it as although there is this online platform database that is required by legislation, customers who may not be as tech savvy should be able to request that COA um, in real time. So, um, however, you know, if, if you have suggestions about that regulation, feel free to bring it up in public comment, but we are not removing that um, COA upon request at this time. All right, next question. Are wholesale cultivation facilities allowed to sell flour directly to consumption lounges? The answer is no. Consumption lounges must obtain all their product from a retailer. And, and I, that I, is in legislation. Yeah, I was just going to say that's uh, in statute. Uh, we have no ability to change that. You would need to speak to your legislators to have that change. All right. Next, just to be clear, retail will not have to upload these files for items that are already in retail locations. Um, this is solely on cultivation and production facilities to submit the approvals in the seller and upload to metric. That would be correct. That information is coming through um, from the source package. So um, all the lab results, the photos, that those things that's coming through from the um, the producer, unless that retailer is approved to package on site. So if you are approved to package on site, then you will need to upload that information. As you stated that we do not need to have specific strains approved in a cellar, does that apply to production items as well or only cultivation? For example, expanding the terpene variety used in a vape line would not need approval. So I think um, what you're describing, expanding the terpene variety, that sounds like an ingredient change. So um, right, strain specific approval. If you're talking about kind of like the naturally occurring terpenes that are in a specific strain, that's a little different. If you're talking about added terpenes, that would be an ingredient change, right? So um, yeah, ingredient changes do require approval. All right, and so the next question kind of, um... Um, yeah, so if also you have been putting in, yeah, if you've been putting just strain changes in, um, sorry about that. You know, when we do get a request, we just kind of look at it as a fresh set. Um, so if you have, I think maybe your inspector was assuming that there was something different um, and just kind of looking at it as a new item. But if you were changing, you know, um, strains just to kind of do that, apologies, we've just been approving, we've just been processing them as normal. So, um, yes, so, um, you do not need to submit strain only approvals, right? In added ingredients or changes to ingredients or changes to production size or equipment that affects the menu. All right, so will information such as product images, ingredients and allergies come across into the POS system when items are accepted? Um, I don't know if those endpoints have been developed that probably would that but probably would need to be a question um, to your POS provider. Um, and then they can they can get the endpoints developed with metric. Uh, next question, if a production facility white label a product for cultivation, do they need to get the packaging approved? Um, again, blank packaging, Bags do not need approval because there's no design on there. What we're approving is the design, making sure that it falls in line with the um, packaging standards. Um, but really, whoever is actually packaging the product should be having it approved, right? We want to make sure that it's under the correct license. That way, when um, we go to the facility and see packaging that's there, that it is, um, it has been approved under that license. But if it's just a white bag, then it does not require approval. 
All right. So do items in metric need to have specific batch lot um, information in the description for each item? Um, at this time, I'm going to say no, because I'm pretty sure that when we uh, looked at this as the design, we um, requested for them to pull that information over from metric. So um, it would be in the part of the information that metric is pulling over from the testing information and the package information. So I will say no, it will be um, transferred over. All right, next question. Can you confirm that there is no distinction from CCB's perspective among regular products, trials, testers, promos, et cetera? Um, same testing, packaging, labeling, and transfer requirements. And thanks, Sarah, for this very long question. And that the trial designation is just a business decision. I get a lot of questions about this internally. Yeah, I can I, jump in if you guys want. Um, yeah, you know, it's you're making cannabis, you're selling cannabis, they purchase it through a dispensary just as if they were a consumer, whether you charge a penny um, because it's a, you know, employee taster or anything like that that's a business decision but yes we do treat all cannabis the same i think the only confusion um that you know and that's fine if that's how your your business calls them out like that the only thing to be wary of is making sure that you have a clear understanding in your own business practices and inventory control for those sample jars that are allowed under NCCR 8.010, because those are not subject to the same tax and therefore cannot be sold. So just making sure that, you know, if you are using those tester sample promo lingo, that internal uh, inventory and quality controls make sure that those products do not get sold as they are not allowed to be sold because they've been um, exempted from that tax. And we have been looking into the statutes regarding this and some allowance for, um, you know, trying out your own products. You don't want to create and sell something that you haven't even tested yet. So um, we do understand that and we plan on working with legislation on that. Okay, next question. Are dispensaries required to update items in metric? Um, we have not received um, a directive from metric that the dispensaries would need to update the items unless, of course, the dispensary is are the, the retailers are approved to um, package on site. So if you are required to package on site, um, then I would say yes. Um, but at this point, I haven't received that that direction from metric. Um, the direction was that the information that the production facilities and the cultivators um, uh, submit into their portals will translate over when they transfer product over to you. If they're transferring that, that item to you and you accept it, it should populate into your, your metric. Um, next question, for cultivation going to retail, on a metric item, do I have to create a new item for every batch and lot? Um, no. Um, your batch and lot uh, is coming for um, the specific harvest. Um, when you create your items, you're pretty much saying that um, your cultivation produces flower um, and it produces um, one gram pre-rolls. Those are your items. Um, however, you're going to uh, sell that to the retailer, however, that's packaged going out of your door. Um, but the specifics come to when it comes to the lot um, is, is when you get that lot tested coming out of that harvest batch, then you put it into a lot, you get it tested, and then you may repackage it 
um, into the items, the items that you want it to be in. Either that's going to be a jar of eights or it's going to be a one gram pre-roll. So I hope that answers your question. So when does this go into effect? Um, this goes into effect May 1st. So effect of May 1st, um, the items that you are now putting into um, metric will have these requirements. Um, and then effect of May 1st um, would start the 90 days that you would have to update any of the existing items that you have in metric. Uh, next question is, you stated that we do not have specific strains approved in a cellar. Does that apply to production items as well or only cultivation? I think that we answered that. They said, thank you. That's what we expected. But just to, um, there is a couple okay. more comments on that. Presumably, cannabis-derived terpenes is already an ingredient. So do we... We don't need to request approval to change the specific terpenes. And then another related question, would the ingredient change mentioned earlier only cover changes to botanically, botanical terp formulations and not high terpene extract derived since the high terpene extract has been extracted from flour? So great questions. That is exactly what we're talking about. If it's an ingredient or we're talking about terpenes in a bottle that you get from terpene company Y, that is an ingredient they're adding to the distillate. You know, if the high terpene extract from a strain that you know has the terpene blend you want, those cannabis derived terpenes, whether you kept them in the distillate or you separated them out prior to put them in the vacuum oven, you're adding them back, those cannabis derived terpenes that are just from the distillation extraction process. No, but we're talking about ingredient changes. So you're adding those separate terpenes. Um, into your product. So those those changes would need to be approved. Right. So so just to add to that as examples, if you extract blue dream and make oil from that versus you extracted head cheese and you make oil from that, those aren't ingredient changes. Your ingredient is still just flour. The strain doesn't matter. But if you're adding the terpenes and like Jason said, that's when you have an ingredient change. All right, the next question, will there be a revised bulletin for metric? Also, will it be shared through metric and not just a metric support platform? Um, new, a new bulletin for metric would be issued in conjunction with a new listserv um, notification coming out from the CCB. Uh, we are reviewing their bulletin just to make sure that um, it is accurate and in, in addition to that the ccb will be taking the questions that has been asked during this webinar and um, creating a updated listserv just as a reminder that it's going to go into effect on may 1st and then adding the frequently asked questions to that listserv as well uh, metric and the ccb has agreed that we will issue concurrently the exact same information the only difference with the metric would be is that they're going to add the step-by-step um, -step instructions with the screenshots um, on how to do it in metric. All right, uh, next question. Will bulk packages need a photo of the product in the bag or the entire bag? Um, if the bulk package is going to a retail, um, it would need uh, a photo of the, um, the item and the photo of the packaging. Um, Juan, I think you've had your hand up. Um, if you want to come off mute, um, you can ask a question. Hear you. Um, I give I've given you permission to unmute, I believe, Juan. Ah, okay. Um maybe if Allison you want to type out a question for him or um 
or if you want to come off mute, let me uh, please raise your hand. All right, so next question, presumably uh, cannabis derived terpenes is already an ingredient. So we don't need to request approval to change the specific terpenes, correct? And we already covered that one, but uh, no, that's not correct if you're adding the terpenes as an ingredient. So if you change the terpenes that you're adding, that's a, that's a change in ingredients. But if they're coming straight from the cannabis through the extraction process, then you wouldn't need a proof of. Is packaging considered blank if it only displays a logo or it would need to be 100% blank? Yeah, we're talking about just the regular black bag, white bag, no design. If there's any design on there, please submit it for approval. So this next one, you can tell me if we need to revisit this or not. With the ingredient change mentioned early, only cover changes no, to we, botanical. I got that one. You got that one. Okay. All right. Uh, next, as a cultivation, when dispensaries ask for the label to read testers, uh, promos, et cetera, do we as a cultivation have to label as such per CCB regs, or is that just personal preference of the buyer and dispensary. I'm I'm going to say that that's probably a part that's going to be a personal preference of the buyer um, yeah. and dispensary. Yeah, we don't have anything in regulation that requires that. The only thing that's required certain labeling is like R and D in your facility. Um, yes, so the next question, I saw the bulletin for this change a few days ago, but is no longer available on metric database site. Is this going to be re-uploaded? Yes, it will be re-uploaded as it is being revised. And that uh, the revisions will be uploaded next week in conjunction with the CCB issuing um, our bulletin as well. All right, so the next question for cultivation. So there's two items. You just said items are made into other items, so we only have to enter the information for the first items. Once we make the item package, the information transfer over, COA, et cetera. Um, if I understand this question correctly, um, the information for just exactly how it's going over right now, you test the source package and then you create something else. You may break those packages down into eighth or you may take that package and make pre-rolls out of it. And so when you send that information over to the retailer, the COA follows. It's gonna be the exact same way when you're uploading the other information as well. How do I get in the listserv mailing list so I can get those emails directly? Um, you can go onto the CCB website. There's a label there to subscribe and you can input your information. And that's ccb.nv.gov. Uh, let's see. And go over to create it. Let's see. Um, I would um, disregard the information that was issued in the last bulletin for metric. Um, waste, um, seeds, cannabis products, none of those are required to um, have this information updated uh, as, a far, as a part of the item. Uh, catalog only items that are destined for retail um, requires the update of the photos, the packaging, um, the photo of the item, the description um, of the ingredients and the allergens. Um, other than that, 
Um, just keep in mind at the back of your head when you're making a product, the question you ask yourself is, is if you're sending this to a retailer. And if you are not, then it doesn't need it. it it's not required. If you are, it's required. And all right, I believe this is probably the next non duplicate question, but it says, sorry, the question I have pertains to the trials tester question. Says I've been in the industry for eight years, and at one point it was specified that facilities were required to name items as testers or promo specifically. Um, I also just want to clarify if there um, is a required naming convention from the CCB for those specific items. Um, great question. So when you are transferring um, product over that would be a either a tester or a promo, we ask that you put that, um, you create that as an item um, in your, uh, your item catalog, right? So therefore, if um, as an auditor um, and an inspector as well, that will probably go into the facility. And now I understand the previous question um, that they're asking that you kind of label it as a tester or probably asking to label it as a either a non infused edible tester or something like that. <clears throat> so it's easily identified that when they put it on the floor and if someone comes in, um, we know that if that's an infused product or not. Um, so I'm pretty sure that that's probably why a lot of retailers are asking for um, the wholesaler to identify those items. In addition, um, we uh, in the past have found that while doing audits as well as taxation doing audits, um, you know, we allow that a cultivation can provide a tester. And so if you're going to provide that tester, we need you to identify it as a tester. Um, but um, other than that, if the retailer is making that request. That is a customer making a request of from someone that they are purchasing product from. Um, so that that would be your business decision on how you want to uh, specify that on your transfer, or, or if you want to label that um, individually. Um, is display still mandatory at this time, meaning that you are putting something on display in the retailer? If you can clarify that question for me. Um, so you say if an item is coming over across as a promo to be sold with another item, does those do those items need to be sold as a penny or can it be a dollar? The price that you charge is a business decision. We are saying that a product cannot be given away for free. So um, if you are saying that you're going to buy one, get one, um, you're going to buy one, get one for a penny um, because it has to be uh, very clear that that product is not given away for free. Um, so if you want to do a promo for a dollar, that's your discretion. That's your business decision. And I think, Kyogi, for the display question, they were talking about like the display samples or the uninfused samples. Okay. Um, that if there's no metric ticket attached, you should put display, display on sample just so that we know why there's no metric tag there. And then and I think sometimes. somebody else had a, they were saying a testers versus they're not another person. I said, so I think they're, they're, I think there's multiple people asking about multiple things, right? Because then there's the uninfused displays 
there are employee promotional items there are and so the confusion comes when in in that 8.010 we're allowing for sample jars right the sniff jars mm -hmm. so that's exactly what we're talking about making sure that it's clear with audit and taxation what has been transferred without being taxed and cannot be sold under that 8.010 what is going to be you know transferred for a regular sale right for your employee promos what may be an additional promo and it is so it's in your best interest to label those things so that way we can tell exactly what it is whether it's an uninfused display sample whether it's a non-taxed sniff jar or whether it's a regular transfer transfer that's going to be penny promo out it's a and and to be I'm glad you clarified. Thank you for clarifying that, Jason. To be perfectly honest, if you're if you're doing something, if this is going to be an employee promo that you're going to be pinning out um, for the sake of your records, um, you can have it identified as such. But if you are in the store and you just got a bulk of uh, a one gram pre rolls and you're going to have a fire sale, that doesn't have to come across as labeled as a promo. That is a business decision that you're going to now run a fire sale and you're going to offer it for a specific amount of money, whether that's a penny or or what or a dollar. Um, if that display sample is coming over, like Jason said, that we allow that one, um, we want to track that display sample, making sure that that display sample is not being sold because that display sample must be destroyed. And so that has to be easily identified. If we see, um, as we hit, there's some people that just take one out of the package and put it on display. Um, we need to know if that product, um, if it's not secure, is it a infused or uninfused display sample that you have up there? So making sure that those are clearly marked um in the retail store is very important um to maintain compliance so i hope that answers the question um but when it comes to if you just saying hey i'm just gonna um a cultivation i'm sending some employee stuff over to retail for promos um and i've talked to the retailer and they're just gonna if if they come in and show their id from xyz cultivation and, and um they're going to come get it and they're going to go and they're going to pay a penny um, to obtain those. Those technically do not need to go across labeled as employee promos. That is an agreement between the retailer and the production company or the cultivation um, that they're going to send their employees to that particular retailer. But see, so, you know, the lingo with samples, promos and things like that means something different to the regulator, means something different to the dispensary. So, you know, making sure that it's clear and your inventory control people know that. So it, it can be a little confusing. So just make sure your systems are set up so that way we can have proper documentation, um, in particular in, in, in terms of um, uninfused samples as well. And I think we missed one. Where did it go? What if the bag just has a logo sticker? Does it need approval? Um, you know, probably, but if it's just your logo, right? Because that can get a little, can get a little hairy. Karis cultivation, but then I may I dress it up like Cookie Monster. That's a logo, but it's not your logo, so um, probably. Yeah, I think for that one, and for just putting only your logo on packaging, um, Jason and I will get together and kind of work through that and then um, send out guidance. But um, yeah, I mean, if it's just your pre-approved logo, um, I, I think that might be a little different. So we'll we'll chat through that one and um, and send out guidance to the industry. And we can definitely um, put out um, those definitions. Um, a lot of the lingo that we use it comes from industry. It's just the industry isn't always consistent if they call it a promo or a tester. Um, we do def 
we do discuss samples in our regulations, and the samples are just for those display samples, not for consumption, not for sale. So that's already in regs, but we can put that in our FAQs, um, sample versus tester versus promo, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why I was saying that if you if if a cultivation in a production facility, they have an agreement with the retailer that they're going to send product over for their employees to sample. Um, that doesn't have to be labeled as a tester. <clears throat> um, it can simply go over as the product and that agreement between those two uh, facilities will determine if that retailer is going to offer it to their employees for. And I mean, like the production facility, the co uh, the cultivation facility or the retail facility, if they want to do a special promotion for um, employees, that's their discretion. It does not have to be labeled um, as something as a tester. Um, but we will make sure that we do uh, clarify everything and the, the frequently asked questions. That's why we wanted you to put the questions in the chat um, so we can have a record of them so we can respond accordingly. Do we have any other questions? All right, well, um, at this time, we're going to end this webinar. Uh, we appreciate everyone attending and asking all of your very wonderful detailed questions. Um, I hope this webinar uh, provided you with the answers that you needed. Again, if you um, feel that you you get off this this uh, webinar and you say, oh, wait a minute, I forgot to ask something, um, please feel free to either send your questions to audit inspections at ccb.nv.gov or to uh, the program support um, at ccb.nv.gov as well. Uh, but please look for the updated bulletin and metric next week, and then we will concurrently issue our listserv um, just recapping all of the, um, the questions that we went through today for those that were unable to attend, and we will um, clean up and upload uh, the slides for you as well, and that would all be under uh, the CCB website under industry resources. All right, thank you for joining, and I'm pretty sure I'll be talking, talking to some of you soon. <laughs> Have a great weekend.